As you all know, Patents for Humanity is a USPTO program that recognizes innovators who use game-changing technology to confront humanitarian challenges around the world. Today, we're here to recognize the seven recipients of the 2015 Patents for Humanity Award. But before I share their inspiring stories with you, it's my pleasure to first introduce the distinguished speakers who've graciously joined us today. Our first speaker is Dr. John Holdren. Dr. Holdren serves as director of the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy. He also serves as assistant to the president for science and technology and co-chair of the president's council of advisors on science and technology, better known as PCAS. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Holdren to the podium. Well, thank you, Jennifer, and thanks to all of you for being here. It really is a pleasure uh, to welcome you on behalf of President Obama to this uh, remarkable event, and in so doing, to reaffirm the President's commitment and his administration's commitment to ensuring that this country is not only the most innovative nation, the most innovative nation it can be, but also an active ambassador for global development and humanitarian principles. Uh, I want to thank particularly Undersecretary and Director of the U.S. Uh, Patent and Trademark Office, Michelle Lee, for her uh, presence here and for the work she has done to advance this agenda. Uh, and let me thank as well in advance the various uh, other distinguished speakers and friends, both from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office and from civil society that have joined us here. The President recognizes that global development is uh, an imperative. It's vital to our national security. It's uh, strategically important, economically important, and morally important. One of the cornerstones of this administration's global development policy is investment in game-changing innovations that have the potential to solve the array of long-standing uh, global challenges that the world faces. The administration's efforts in that area focus on making the best use of the kinds of scientific and technological breakthroughs that are characteristic of America's entrepreneurs, innovators, and researchers by expediting commercialization of inventions for humanitarian purposes and by rewarding companies that use their patented technologies to solve societal challenges. The American patent system is a critical piece of our innovation economy and it's an important tool for addressing humanitarian challenges around the world. That's why this president has voiced time and time again his commitment to pursuing common sense legislation that curbs abuses of the patent system, levels the playing field for inventors, and promotes innovations like the ones that we're celebrating at this event. Today's awardees are private sector leaders who have answered President Obama's call to unleash science, technology, and innovation to help solve global development challenges. This year's awardees include companies engaging in incredibly impressive work, from supplying anti-malarial compounds to vitamin-enriched rice to all-terrain wheelchairs and more. Indeed, that's what the Patents for Humanities program, which was launched at the White House in February 2012, is all about. Specifically, that program, which is also sometimes known as P4H, probably everybody here knows that already, creates business incentives for the use of patented technologies to address global humanitarian and development needs. The White House Office of Science and Technology Policy has long recognized the promise of these kinds of mechanisms for helping to overcome market failures and catalyzing potentially game-changing innovations through market incentives. At its core, Patents for Humanity aims to reward forward-thinking, socially conscious inventors who have demonstrated uses of their patented technologies to make the world a better place, whether through improving public health and quality of life, providing new opportunities to developing communities, or advancing scientific understanding of key humanitarian issues. To the awardees here today, your work is more than worthy of being celebrated. So on behalf of President Obama and the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, I congratulate the winners, and we look forward to the future innovations and solutions that people in this room will undoubtedly be generating. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Dr. Holdren, for your inspiring remarks with us this morning. As a registered patent attorney, it is my humble honor to now introduce the Under Secretary of Commerce for Intellectual Property and Director of the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, Michelle K. Lee. Under Secretary Lee is the first woman to serve as Director of USPTO. In this role, she serves as a Principal Advisor on Domestic and International Intellectual Property Matters, as well as a leader and uh, oversight provider for an agency of over 12,000 employees. She previously served as the first director of USPTO's Silicon Valley office and as for the first head of patents and patent strategy and deputy general counsel for Google. Please join me in welcoming Under Secretary Lee. Thank you and good morning everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here. Very much appreciate you being here. Uh, I'd like to give a special thanks to Jennifer Lee, uh, Deputy General Counsel of the Office of Science, Technology, and Policy, and Ed Elliott, where's Ed? Sitting here in the front row, USPTO's Patent for Humanity Program Manager for helping us put this event together. We would not be here without their hard work. And of course, to Dr. Holdren and Michael Oyster uh, for taking the time out of their busy schedules to speak to us today. I'd also like to thank our three partners for the 2014 Patents for Humanity Awards cycle. The Association of University Technology Managers, who solicited and provided dozens of technical experts across its membership to act as judges to evaluate the many uh, super qualified applications that we got. We appreciate their time and effort. The, Diplom the Diplomacy Matters Institute, which led our first targeted outreach effort to foreign embassies in the Washington DC area. As can be seen from this year's results, our foreign colleagues quickly embraced the program, and many thanks to DMI. And the co-sponsor of this award and many other USPTO programs, the National Inventors Hall of Fame, which procured the trophies you see sitting over here for our winners. So thank you to them as well. And I also appreciate uh, the support that this program has received from our uh, Patent Office of Professional Association and their president, Robert Budens. And of course, last but not least, the White House and the Office of Science, Technology, and Policy for arranging our presence in this room. You can't beat it. Um, you may have noticed some of the room's uh, nautical details, uh, the constellation of stars that are etched in the ceiling, the seahorses and dolphins that run along the cast iron railing in the second level, and I think there's a compass in the middle of the floor there in the center of the room. They date back to the late 19th century when the Department of Navy moved into the East Wing, as they seem especially appropriate in today's ceremony because in many ways the Patents for Humanity program is like a beacon for innovators, leading them to the full potential of their innovation uh, in the service of humanity. It's an example of the great things that can be accomplished when intellectual property rights and innovation work together to solve truly global problems. In a ceremony at the USPTO a little over two weeks ago, we marked the 225th anniversary of the first Patent Act, signed into law by President George Washington in 1790. The words of that act, any useful art, manufacture, engine, machine, or device, or any improvement thereon, laid the groundwork for more than two centuries of cumulative innovation that transformed our nation and our way of life in ways that President Washington and his founding fathers could never have imagined. The only US president ever to own a United States patent, Abraham Lincoln, once said that patents added the fuel of interest to the fire of genius in the discovery and production of new and useful things. And that has never been truer than it is today. In recent years, we've seen the profound impact that a good idea, patented and marketed, can have on human beings, transcending national borders and transforming the lives around the world. It's because of that transform transformative power that we are here today. We want to showcase the laudable work of patent owners to address 21st century humanitarian challenges and demonstrate how patents can and do help build a better world. Consider what these award winners have been able to accomplish. They have found new and innovative ways, as Dr. Holdren mentioned, to combat malaria, tuberculosis, 
and malnutrition. Improve basic sanitation, provide light through solar power, and increase the mobility of disabled people, all in some of the world's most disadvantaged and underserved regions. And given the global impact of our program, I think it's especially noteworthy that among this year's Patent for Humanity winners are foreign recipients from France, Germany, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom. In addition to the very tangible benefits their innovations and those of their fellow award winners will deliver, they will also inspire others to bring the power of innovation to bear on more of the world's most pressing humanitarian challenges. At the USPTO, we get inquiries all the time from inventors hoping to follow in our winners' footsteps. That's the difference Patents for Humanity and its award winners are making in the world. Not just innovating, but inspiring the next generation of innovators. So, I'd like to congratulate all of you for being part of this great and noble effort. You are all truly amazing innovators, and the benefit of your work, what you have done, is incalculable. Your groundbreaking efforts are making a difference in the lives of millions of people across this globe. And the example that you set will inspire and guide countless more. Thank you all for coming today, and thank you to the White House and all of you for making this possible. Thank you, Under Secretary Lee. We next have a few words from the National Inventors Hall of Fame. Since 1973, the Hall of Fame has recognized over 500 world-class inventors and their life-changing innovations. In addition to inventor recognition programs, the Hall of Fame and its parent organization, Invent Now, educates nearly 100,000 grade school children every year with hands-on experience in the wonders of innovation. The Hall of Fame has generously provided the beautiful trophies for today's ceremony, as Under Secretary Lee mentioned. We are glad to have with us today the CEO of the Hall of Fame, Mr. Michael Oyster. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Oyster. Thank you. Um, you know, it's a great honor to be here and represent the National Veterans Hall of Fame. I don't feel worthy of representing those 500 amazing people, and I'm equally amazed by this group. We applaud the United States Patent and Trademark Office for not only issuing patents and trademarks, but really also helping educate society on the big picture, which is the importance of innovation. Our collaboration with USPTO has no greater purpose than to acknowledge the creative efforts of life-saving and life-enhancing inventors for the benefit of humanity and to inspire the next generation. Like our National Inventors Hall of Fame inductees, the Patents for Humanity award winners are the best possible role models we can find for more than 100,000 kindergarten through 12th grade children and the 10,000 teachers we impact on an annual basis through programs like Camp Invention Invention Project and our intellectual property literacy programs across the country in 2,000 school districts. I would also be remiss if I didn't recognize one of our Collegiate Inventors Competition winners, Steve Katzeros, was in the first class of Patents for Humanity winners. Finally, I want to invite you to attend the 43rd Annual National Inventors Hall of Fame Induction Ceremony and Innovation Echo Forum on May 12th and May 13th. It is held in partnership with the USPTO and hosted by the Smithsonian. I must say it's the greatest celebration of American innovation and an experience you will not forget. Again, thank you on behalf of the National Inventors Hall of Fame and congratulations to this year's Patents for Humanity winners. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the presentation of the awards. I'll read a description of each winner, after which their invited representatives will come up to the stage from this side and take a photo with Under Secretary Lee in front of the trophies. I'm going to begin with the category of medicine. In the category of medicine, there are two winners. The first is Sanofi, for supplying large quantities of anti-malarial compounds on an at-cost basis for use in developing countries. Artemisinin is an anti-malarial drug derived from the sweet wormwood plant in Asia and Africa. Supplies can be expensive or unavailable at certain times of the year due to growing cycles, crop yields, and weather. 
building on research by the University of California, Berkeley, and the Gates Foundation to produce artemisinin from yeast, Sanofi used its manufacturing expertise to scale it to industrial levels, and it is now supplying large quantities of artemisinin and malarial compounds on a no-profit, no-loss basis for use in developing countries. Representing Sanofi are Alain Werner, Robert Sebag, Philippe, and Philippe Chereau. Please welcome Sanofi's representatives. Congratulations. The second recipient in medicine is Novartis. Novartis discovered a class of compounds that are active against drug-sensitive drug and multi-drug resistant strains of tuberculosis, or TB. TB kills more adults worldwide than any infectious disease besides HIV AIDS. One of the biggest challenges in combating multi-drug resistant TB uh, uh, is providing the drugs in a way that will reach the people who need them the most. Novartis has graciously provided its entire tuberculosis R&D program to the TB Alliance, a nonprofit organization that seeks new and improved tuberculosis treatment regimens for further development. Representing Novartis are Leslie Fisher, Paul Fellner, and Arlene Musser. Please join me in welcoming the representatives from Novartis. Our next category of award winners is in sanitation. This year's winner is American Standard for distributing 700,000 Sato safe toilet latrine pans to communities in Africa and Southeast Asia. American Standard invented the Sato safe toilet technology for people who lack access to safe basic sanitation. The toilet includes specifically, specially designed latrine pans and collectors with a counterweighted trap door that can be flushed by pouring a small amount of water onto it. When closed, the flapper door creates an airtight seal that prevents insects from entering and exiting the pit, thus eliminating a primary route of disease transmission. Over 700,000 of these pans have been distributed throughout the world, including in Bangladesh, Uganda, Haiti, Malawi, and the Philippines, through partnerships with UNICEF, Save the Children, and other non-governmental organizations. Representing American Standard here today are Jim McHale, Daigo Ishiyama, and Greg Gutartz, the inventors of the technology. Our next category is energy, and our energy recipient is Sun Power Corporation for providing portable solar-powered energy stations to replace kerosene in Philippine villages. Nearly 18% of the world's population is energy impoverished. Combustion-based lighting, such as kerosene lamps, contribute to an estimated 3.5 million deaths each year from health impacts and house fires. For these communities, SunPower has developed a portable solar power station by outfitting a standard shipping container with solar panels on top and equipment inside to power hundreds of safe rechargeable lanterns. Villagers in the Philippines can rent these lanterns for a small fee, which is then reinvested to expand and improve the program. SunPower donates the container and supplies to partner organizations along with ongoing technical support. Representing SunPower today are Eric Wingrove, Marissa Yao, and David Petrini. Please join me in welcoming Sunpower.
Our next category is nutrition, and we are fortunate to have two winners in nutrition this year. The first is Nutriset, a small company based in France for fighting childhood malnutrition with their Plumpy Nut products. According to UNICEF, as many as 67 million children suffer from acute malnutrition every year. Children suffering from prolonged malnutrition often cannot digest ordinary food. Nutriset developed nutritional products made from peanuts and other ingredients that help malnourished children quickly and safely regain weight and digestive function. In addition to delivering their Plumpy Nut products throughout the world with partners like UNICEF and USAID, Nutriset also offers open licensing to producers in the developing world so communities can work towards self-sufficiency. Representing Nutriset are Thomas Kouaye, uh, Adeline Lesquen Gaitier, and Maria Kasperian fr from their US licensee, Adicia. Congratulations. The second winner in nutrition is Golden Rice for creating vitamin A and rich strains of rice to prevent blindness and death in subsistence farming communities. Vitamin A deficiency is a leading killer of children globally and is also the leading cause of childhood blindness. Most cases occur in Asia where the staple food, white rice, lacks vitamin A sources typically found in animal products and leafy vegetables. Golden Rice was genetically engineered to provide a source of vitamin A for people subsisting mainly on rice. The Golden Rice Project has worked since 2000 to donate golden rice to the resource poor in developing countries. Local golden rice varieties are currently being developed by public sector institutions in Bangladesh, China, India, Indonesia, the Philippines, and Vietnam. Farmers are free to plant, grow, harvest, sell, and replant the seed without licenses or fees for use. Representing Golden Rice are Adrian Jubach and Robert Russell. And last but not least, in the category of living standards, we recognize GRIT, Global Research Innovation and Technology for Developing an All-Terrain Wheelchair. An estimated 65 million people in the developing world require wheelchairs. However, conventional wheelchairs don't function well on the rough and uneven terrain commonly encountered in many developing regions. GRIT was created by engineering graduates of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology to increase mobility for the disabled around the world. Their three-wheel leveraged freedom chair uses a push lever drivetrain, I don't know what that is, but that sounds pretty amazing on its own, <laughs> to help people move over broken pavement, dirt roads, fields, hills, and rocky terrain. It's built from standard bicycle parts to enable local repairs with available materials. After graduating, the MIT students founded GRIT to bring the product to market. Their chair has been distributed in partnership with the World Bank, the Red Cross, and others in India, Brazil, Kenya, and other countries. Representing GRIT are Ben Judge and Tish Skolnick, and representing MIT is Dr. Amos Winter, who helped invent the Leverage Freedom Chair. Congratulations to all of the 2015 Patents for Humanity Award winners. Your creative innovations and tireless efforts are making a difference in the lives of millions of people. I would like to thank, in addition to Under Secretary Lee, Mr. Oyster, and Dr. Holdren, all of the many people from USPTO and OSTP who put this event together. Jennifer Moret, Jessica Pelliciata, Lauren Smith, Choi Lee, Edward Elliott, Judy Grundy, and many other folks who uh, this event would not have been possible without. This concludes our ceremony. We welcome you to stay and enjoy this beautiful room. There will be beverages and refreshments outside. 
At this time, I would like the winners to please stay so that we can take a group photo with all of you in the front of the room. Thank you all very much for coming.